As we review for Unit 1, which was all about limits and continuity, I'd like us to practice some questions from past AP calculus exams. However, because this is Unit 1, we don't actually have enough information to do entire free response questions, where Part A, B, C might be on uh, things from future units. So I've pulled together parts of free response questions from past exams which do pertain to limits and continuity. Let's start with free response question number six from the 2008 exam part D. Function f involves the natural log of x. So before we answer the actual question, let's make sure we remember our parent functions. You should have memorized what the parent function uh, natural log x looks like. It has a vertical asymptote, which is the y-axis, and it goes like this, it passes through an x value of one. So this is what natural log x looks like. Uh, with this in mind, you know that as x approaches zero, I'm gonna go ahead and write this down, as x approaches zero from the right, natural log x approaches negative infinity. So as we approach zero from the right, this function just falls down, down, down. Therefore, as x approaches zero from the right, the overall function f of x is going to approach negative infinity over zero. But this means we have a really big negative number divided by a really tiny positive number. So we're going to get a really, really big negative number. In other words, the overall value of the function is approaching negative infinity. So we should say that the limit does not exist. Let's move on to free response question number six from the 2003 exam. Function f is defined by this piecewise function, and we have to figure out if it is continuous at x equals three. According to the definition of continuity, if f is continuous at x equals three, then the limit as x approaches three from the left must equal the limit as x approaches three from the right which must also equal the value of the function at three. So let's find the value of each of these three things and see if they are all equal. Let's start with the limit as x approaches three from the left. From the left, the function is defined by the square root of x plus one. So this limit uh, we can find by direct substitution. Substituting three for x gives us the square root of three plus one, which is equal to the square root of four, which is just two. So that is the limit as x approaches three from the left. Now, what about the limit as x approaches three from the right? The function on the right will be defined by uh, five minus x. So the limit as x approaches three from the right of f of x, by direct substitution, we have uh, five minus three, which again is equal to two. So far, so good. We need to check one last thing. We need to find the value of the function at three. Well, at three, uh, you can see the or equal to line right here. So when x is equal to three, the function is again defined by the square root of x plus one. So we're gonna do uh, the square root of x plus one, but we're gonna do direct substitution, obviously. So this will be the square root of three plus one, which again will give us two. So because all of these are equal, we know that the function is continuous at x equals three. I'm just going to write that out. In conclusion, we can say, since the limit as x approaches three from the left equals the limit as x approaches three from the right, 
which equals the value of the function at 3, then f of x is continuous at x equals 3. Let's move on to problem number 2 from the 1998 exam. Let f be the function given by f of x equals 2x times e to the 2x power. Find the limit as x approaches negative infinity and the limit as x approaches positive infinity. Notice that we do not have to justify our answer. So I'm just going to show you how to think about it and come up with the correct answer, but there's not a lot of work that you actually need to show. Quick side lesson, we can use the acronym FEPL to help us remember which functions grow faster as x approaches infinity. FEPL stands for factorials, exponentials, polynomials, and logarithms. As x approaches infinity, factorials grow faster than exponentials, which grow faster than polynomials, which grow faster than logarithms. As we reason our way through this problem, let's think of f of x as the product of two functions, 2x times e to the 2x power. Let's start with the limit as x approaches negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, 2x is going to become more and more and more negative. So this is approaching negative infinity. What about e to the 2x power? What's happening to this as x approaches negative infinity? So imagine that we have uh, negative exponents which are getting bigger and bigger. So you should be picturing things like um, e to the negative 2 power and then e to the negative 20 power. These are just examples. e to the negative 200 power. But these are the same as 1 over e squared, 1 over e to the 20th power, 1 over e to the 200 power. So you can see that the denominator is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Therefore, the overall value of the fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and the expression is approaching zero. Let's put it back together and ask ourselves what will happen to the function 2x e to the 2x as x approaches negative infinity. We just saw that the 2x part is approaching negative infinity, while the e to the 2x part is approaching zero. So the question is, which one of these will win? Will the overall limit be negative infinity or will it be zero? That's where the FEPL comes in. e to the 2x is an exponential function, whereas 2x is a polynomial function. The exponential function is the faster growing one. So that's the one that's going to win. That's why the overall limit is going to be zero. Please understand that you did not need to write any of that down except for the answer. I'm just showing you what your thought process would be that would allow you to come up with the right answer. In fact, I would recommend that you not write FEPL down on your AP exam. That is a made up acronym to help you remember that uh, property, but that's not official mathematical terminology. Now let's think about what happens as x approaches positive infinity. Well, 2x is just going to approach infinity as x gets bigger and bigger. Uh, with the e to the 2x power, since x is approaching positive infinity, uh, these won't be dropped down to the denominator or anything. As x gets bigger and bigger, this is just getting bigger and bigger. It's approaching infinity. So of course, if you just have infinity times infinity, the overall limit is infinity. Um, but that actually means that the limit does not exist. Actually, I like to write my final answer this way. The limit of 2x e to the 2x as x approaches infinity does not exist. Okay, let's do the first two parts of FRQ number 4 from 1986. Function f is a piecewise function 
where a and b are constants, let's do part a, which says that a is 2 and b is 3. Is f continuous for all x? Justify your answer. If a equals 2 and b equals 3, then the second piece becomes 2x squared plus 3x. Notice that the first piece is an absolute value function. We know that is continuous everywhere. It's just a v. Notice that the second piece is a polynomial function. That is also continuous everywhere. So the only area we have to worry about is the location of x equals 1. According to the definition of continuity, the limit as we approach 1 from the left must equal the limit as we approach 1 from the right. So let's check that out. Let's start with the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. On the left side of 1, the function is defined by the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 2. We can find this limit by direct substitution. So let's let x equal 1 in this expression. We end up with the absolute value of 1 minus 1 plus 2. Um, that's just going to be 0, so the limit is 2. Let's compare this to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. On the right-hand side, the function is defined by 2x squared plus 3x. This limit can be found by direct substitution. So let's let x equal 1, and we will get 2 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1. Well, that's just 2 plus 3, which is 5. Notice that the limit as x approaches 1 from the left does not equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. So right there, we have a discontinuity. Remember that the original question for part A was, is f continuous for all values of x? And our final answer will, will be no, since the limit as x approaches 1 from the left does not equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. f of x is not continuous at x equals 1. Let's move on to part b. Describe all values of a and b for which f is a continuous function. Remember, we know that function f is continuous to the left of 1 because this is an absolute value function. We know that the function is continuous to the right of 1 because this is a polynomial function. We just need to make sure that f is continuous at the transition between the two functions at x equals 1. According to the definition of continuity, we have to make sure that the limit as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right and that has to be equal to the value of the function at 1. That's just the definition of continuity at x equals 1. As before, we can evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 from the left by direct substitution. Let's let x equal 1. This will become the absolute value of 1 minus 1 plus 2 which of course uh, this is just 0 plus 2 so that is just 2. We can also find the second limit by direct substitution. Let's go ahead and plug in 1 for these x's. So that's going to give us a times 1 squared plus b times 1. So of course that's just going to be a plus b. Because of the or equal to part right here, we know that the value of the function at x equals 1 will also be defined by ax squared plus bx. So we can also find that value by direct substitution, which of course gives you the exact same thing as we had for the previous limit, which is just a plus b. So this becomes a little bit redundant. So as far as describing the values of a and b, you can really just focus on this part, right? Because this is just the same thing again. So here's the final answer. f of x will be continuous for values of a and b such that a plus b equals 2.